Hello everyone and welcome to Poetry Surprises. Yesterday I want to talk to you about Shed. Shed. Now, an installation I did in 2011 involved the uh, creation of a, a stereo soundtrack that told the story of the lives of the people that lived in a block of flats in North East London from about 1960 to 1975. And the story involved characters who lived in that block of flats. So the real central character is the block of flats. Uh, at the bottom of the block of flats, as you can sort of see in the picture here, uh, are sheds. And those sheds were what allowed you uh, to store stuff like bikes and junk and rubbish uh, uh, at, the, at the bottom of the uh, uh, at the bottom of the block of flats, and I put uh, speakers in there with a soundtrack that read these stories as people came and went. Now, all the people who witnessed the uh, installation were new to the block of flats, so they were kind of discovering the history uh, of their uh, their 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 accommodations past. I'd like to read you uh, the poems uh, that uh, are called Sheds, which obviously takes its name from the title of the book. And it looks at my memories as a kid of what was in the sheds, six sheds at the bottom of these flats. Uh, so here we are, Sheds. Number one, looking into a cave of order, tools clean and stacked, new or as good as, a picnic table hung from the brickwork, push-pull lawnmower, baskets for pegs, for laundry, for shopping, for odds and ends, hardly dare glance for fear of trespass, Alma and Cyril always around when the shed was open, like bees around honey. He was a butcher, came home with bloodied cuts of beef, carried from his van and placed in the shed. Sundays he'd bring out meat and a cleaver. Number two. All DIY and gardening. Not that Joan did either. Her husbands did. The first died of leukaemia and left his tools. Shears, secateurs, rolls of tape, a blow lamp, nails. The second added wallpaper, rolls and rolls, and a carpet and cement. He crazy paved the garden, but the weeds pushed through. The third got out quickly, leaving nothing but wood shavings. Mo, the fourth, kept the poodle box in the shed before he got fed up on his wedding day and disappeared. Number three. Vera, Sid and Alfie kept their shed well locked. Even a board at the bottom to stop the hedgehogs. Vera said. When it opened, it was guarded. And when you glimpsed in, it was always dark. When Sid battered his girlfriend, he did it with timber from the shed. When she became his wife, she always shunned the shed. Vera worked in a shirt factory, came home with boxes which disappeared into the shed. When the roof cracked and the rain got in, she effed till blue. Number four. Hours. Chaos. Dad's stilsons, wrenches, mattocks and saws. The things he said were worth a fortune and which we eventually had to throw away. Rolls of cable, rolls of lino, a broken pane of glass, an armchair we bought from Cranbrook Road, sheets of hardboard, a one-bar electric flyer without a plug, 
dartboard, shove opening board, a notice board from Dad's bedding shop, a wooden board Mum used to paint toy soldiers on, blunt knives, crockery, back copies of the trade journal. Number five. Belonged to Mrs Robinson. Who can remember her? She was only a name, but the door was locked, even as it, as it went through the mysteries of further owners. Has anyone seen inside? It's a hole, an emptiness, a brick wall to dreams, hopes and fears. If there are things inside, you don't want to know, though there may be a paradise too. Mrs Robinson maybe lives there still, on a cardboard island, her eyes wide and in the dark, her heart just fluttering like fingernails, like knives, as residents come and go. Number six. Derek loved his Honda Civic. His shed was dedicated to it. It opened every Sunday for several hours. A vacuum cleaner, shampoos, buckets, sponges, chamois, wax. The car was parked as near as possible and Walter brought in buckets. At first, Derek took the bucket from the shed, climbed upstairs to come down minutes later with steam and suds in his wake. Later, he filled up from jeans at number two. He'd foam up the sponge and stroke his lovely motor, hoover, wax, then lock up for the week. Well, I hope you enjoyed those little views into the sheds in Shed. There are more stories in here, stories of attempted suicides, con men, dodgy characters, uh, I'll be reading more in the future, but for now, I think we've seen enough of Shed, and I'm off back into my Shed. Bye for now.